Hi, I'm Professor Baldwin, and today I'm going to teach you about the average rate of change, the difference quotient, and function behavior. Average rate of change is the slope of a line. Here we're talking about the slope of a secant line. And if you look at this graph, the secant line is a straight line that's drawn through at least two points on a curve. And in this graph, we see the equation for the slope of that secant line. So this will give us the average rate of change. This looks very similar to the slope of a straight line. Remember the slope of a straight line is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Here our y2 and y1 are replaced with f of x2 and f of x1 really means the same thing because when you evaluate a function f for a given value of x, it's giving you the y-coordinate. So you don't have an extra formula here to remember. Just remember the slope of a line. In example one, you're asked to determine the average rate of change of the function on the given interval. This interval are your x values. So we're saying when x is 0 through when x is 1. So if x equals 0, you need to find f of 0. So you solve that function with x being 0. 0 squared minus 3, or negative 3. And then our second point would be x equals 1. f of 1 is 1 squared minus 3, which is 1 minus 3, or negative 2. And then you just substitute everything into that equation for the average rate of change. We have negative 2 minus the negative 3 over 1 minus 0. Simplify the numerator, negative 2 plus 3, and our denominator 1 minus 0 is 1. Negative 2 plus 3 is 1 over 1, and that simplifies to 1. So the average rate of change for this function f of x on the interval 0, 1 would be the value 1. Now let's talk about function behavior. Function behavior is talking about what the graph is doing over the x values. So as you read the graph, you always read it from left to right. Okay, so read from left to right. Start at the, the furthest left part of the graph and follow it. If, when you're reading that graph from left to right, if you're increasing, so if your point is moving up, then your function is increasing. If, as you're reading the graph, you start falling, that's decreasing. If you stay flat or horizontal, it's constant. Let's look at this example, example two. We're gonna use interval notation to write the intervals over which f is increasing, decreasing, and constant. Start at the furthest left part of the graph. Notice that there's an arrow here, that's pointing to negative infinity. And the shape of this line, or graph, has the, the x values heading towards negative infinity as well. So our interval starts at negative infinity. And we're going to follow this graph. So I like to just draw along it. And notice from negative infinity, I'm increasing, right? I'm climbing up until I get here. And the x value here is negative 1. So on the interval negative infinity to negative 1, the graph or our function is increasing. Now I'm going to change colors and notice that as we transition at this point and we keep on following along that graph, we start falling. So from that point negative 1, and we've got this arrow on the far right, to positive infinity, our graph is decreasing. So the function decreases from negative 1 to infinity. Now constant doesn't happen. So here it's never constant. But if you were to see any portion of the graph where it's horizontal like this green line, 
that's when you would have constants. So as you're following the graph from left to right, you stay horizontal, you don't move up or down, it's constant. Now, as we transition between increasing and decreasing or decreasing to increasing, this is when we have relative maximum and relative minimum. So the relative maximum is going to be like a peak and a minimum is going to be like a valley, a low part. The key part of your relative maxima and minima are location and value. So a maximum and a minimum are a point. So it's an x, y. The x coordinate tells you the location, where that maximum or minimum is, and the y coordinate tells you the value. So how maximum or minimum that value is. Let's look at this example number three. We're gonna identify the location and the value of any relative maxima or minima of the function. So let's look at maxima first. So um, maxima is when we transition from increasing to decreasing. So this point here, which is the point zero, zero is a maxima. Remember that the x coordinate tells you the location and the y coordinate tells you the value. So here we would say we have a relative maxima zero, that's the value, at x equals zero. This one's a little tricky because we have the origin as our maxima. So let's look at our minima. A minima, we have two here, are where we go from decreasing to increasing. So we have a relative minima. Let's look at our first one here. We have a relative minima of negative four at x equals negative two. That's this first point. Then we also have a relative minima of negative four at x equals two. So the location of our minima is negative four and the value is negative two or I totally said that backwards. So the location of our minima here are at negative two and two and the value of that minima is negative four. Now the last thing we need to cover today is the difference quotient. The difference quotient is a formula for finding the average rate of change for a function between two values x and x plus h. This is your equation for the difference quotient. And I'm gonna teach you a trick for making sure you simplify it correctly and you don't miss any steps. So first you wanna find f of x plus h. Remember, this is saying substitute x plus h into the given function wherever you have an x. That would give us negative 2 times x plus h plus 5. Distribute that negative 2. We have negative 2x minus 2h plus 5. Simplify this. This is For us here, this one is as simplified as it can be, but if you have a function where you can simplify, simplify. Then we move to the next step, which is putting everything together. We found f of x plus h. We're given f of x. So we're going to put everything together into the difference quotient formula. So we start with f of x plus h. That's what we just found. And I put it in parentheses to start. And then I subtract and I put f of x also in parentheses. I do this because I'm subtracting. And because I'm subtracting in that numerator, I wanna make sure I'm distributing that subtraction sign all the way through. And by putting it in parentheses to start, we'll make sure I do that. So our f of x plus h, we don't have anything to distribute, so we can remove the parentheses there. We have negative 2x minus 2h plus five. But this second part, we have to distribute this negative to each term inside the parentheses. That gives us a plus 2x 
minus 5. And then the whole thing is divided by h. Now you want to make sure you're simplifying the numerator, so combine any like terms. Here we have a negative 2x and a positive 2x. Those cancel each other out. We also have a positive 5 and a negative 5, which will also cancel each other out. So our numerator is down to negative 2h, and our denominator is h. Since the numerator is negative 2 times h, we can simplify those h's. The h's become 1, and negative 2 times 1 is negative 2. Now, this negative 2 is the difference quotient for our given function, but sometimes you can have a difference quotient that is still a polynomial. So you could end up with a difference quotient like x squared plus 2xh plus h squared. They won't always be constant. Sometimes it'll still be a polynomial. I hope you found this video helpful. Thank you so much for watching and please check out some of my other videos.